All right, everybody, welcome to module five. So in this one, we are looking at the conservation of mass and energy for open systems. Um, before, if you look at module four, we just look at conservation of energy. We don't look at mass. Okay? Do you remember the reason for it? Because it was a closed system. I don't have any mass that's leaving or that's entering my system. Okay? So it was kind of a little easier. Okay? So to be honest with you, this concept is a little bit tricky for me to uh, go over. Okay? And I'll give you two options why I'm saying that. Option one is this. I don't know this topic at all. I just woke up half an hour early today, studied this, so I feel a little, I'm a bit, you know, overwhelmed. I'm not sure. It's kind of difficult. That's option A. Option B is this. As I mentioned maybe a thousand times, I'm a foot mechanics guy. In foot mechanics, we cover these in much, much more detail. Okay? But before covering these concepts, I cover something called Reynolds Transport Theorem, and everything belongs or rather starts over there. You know, where to stop? Okay? In the thermodynamics, that's the question that I'm kind of struggling with, okay? So I'm going to look at most little things that you really, really would need from thermodynamics standpoint. And I'm going to pick up the stuff that you didn't really need in thermodynamics and you need in foot mechanics in foot mechanics class, okay? Just want to highlight that from the uh, get-go. So I think before we go ahead, I want to, uh, you know, one more uh, and kind of like uh, last time. So I want to uh, visit this once again, okay? And I want to draw a system, any any system over here. Um, this boundary can be real, can be imaginary too, okay? And as we discussed in the first law, I can have Q coming in or out, okay? And if you remember, if this was zero, we call this adiabatic, right? That means that this Q is equal to zero. So we have the definition for it. Um, we also said that mass or rather, uh, in this particular case, the work can come in or leave the system to my surrounding, right? This is the surrounding. That's good. And both in the open and closed systems, this is fine. This is fine. Okay, so far so good. Now, I'm going to introduce the mass. The mass related to basically the mass, but the, the, the more important thing about mass is that the mass has energy. Okay, the energy associated with the mass will be entering or leaving my system. Okay, so this will determine whether I have an open system or a closed system. Okay, if I have this uh, mass transfer, I'm going to call this an open system. And I will define something called control volume. Okay, and if the mass does not transfer my boundaries, um, then I'm going to call a closed system. And you have to look at module number four. Okay, we covered this. This is called... Uh, this is called control mass as opposed to control volume. Also, I want to give you this example uh, from module 4. I have covered this in extensive case, piston cylinder device, a lot of application in thermodynamics. And I defined the system, do you remember that, as this particular, whatever the fluid is inside. And I said that this is completely sealed. So in some cases, this may not be sealed, right? There may be some uh, leakage over here. Or even on purpose, well, I can connect this to an airline, right? You know? So this is an example for an uh, open system from a thermodynamics standpoint, okay? And I also want to visit why am I making a big deal out of this whole thing, okay? And I'm going to uh, give my typical example. I have a drain over here and I have water over here. And I have a, a faucet. And I'll give you, uh, you know, let's say that I pick my system as this, okay? The water inside my, of my sink. Okay, so the big deal about the mass, and I'm looking more towards the conservation of energy over here, is you know this. Let's say that the temperature here is uh, 30 uh, Celsius. Okay, and if I put water from 50 Celsius coming into the system, what will happen is the, the, the temperature inside of it will increase. And that means that the internal energy needs to increase, right? But so far, if I completely ignore this, there was no mechanism that include that into my analysis. Okay, the, the first law. So that is why it is a big deal, and we have to um, address that, okay? Um, and before I go ahead and address that, um, I want to talk about a couple concepts that I already covered, but I'm just double or triple ensuring everybody is on the same page because we use this a lot, okay? Mass flow rate. So this is m dot. This is rho, which is the density, velocity, and area, okay? Velocity. Again, just one last, uh, you know, 
uh, time. This is volume for me. This is specific volume for me. This is velocity, the way that I write. Okay, you don't have to do it. I'm just telling you what I do. Okay, and the unit of it, we covered this as well. This is going to be pound mass per second, right? It is the mass per second. How much mass is flowing per second of a given cross section? And inside, it says kilogram per second. I probably should have done the other way around first aside and British gravitation, but that's going to do fine. Um, and if you remember, we had this, uh, you know, the turbine that is connected to a generator from a hydropower plant and all, right? What we were doing was we were multiplying this by the mechanical uh, energy per unit mass, right? And we were getting the power. So that's why this is a kind of a big deal, okay? So I multiply things with m dot, and we'll go visit that as well, okay? Um, unfortunately, in the fluid mechanics, mostly to the fluid mechanics domain, we don't use mass flow rate that often, unfortunately, okay? Um, we do use something called volumetric flow rate, okay? Because why, why, why is this? Let me explain for a, one second over here. Um, you know, like say that there's a river flowing, right? I don't really know what is the uh, mass of it. I, I don't really use that terminology in my language. I use mostly the volume, like I can say feet cube or meter cube. So the volumetric flow rate is, again, now you have to be even more careful sometimes because we are using volumetric uh, as a terminology, you may be confused that this is a volume. Indeed, that's not the case. This is a velocity, okay? Um, anyways, and you can clearly see over here, if I go back, this V times A, if I multiply by volumetric flow rate, so mass, mass flow rate, you kind of need to multiply this by the volumetric flow rate, or you re remember this from the in thermodynamics, we use the specific volume more common as compared to the uh, density. So I can simply write here m dot will be equal to volume dot divided by the specific volume. Okay, then uh, and one, one last thing. Um, you know, I talked about this velocity, but let, let me uh, draw a real PVC pipe as an example, obviously. Um, what would be the velocity profile over here? Um, because, um, you know, we call something like a viscous flow. Again, this is way down the road, but we call something like a viscous flow. And what I get is I get a parabolic velocity profile. So now the question I'm posing you in here is when we say V, it's everywhere, right? It is here and it is here. So which V am I talking about? Am I talking about the maximum that will be at the center line? My drawing is not perfect, okay? Um, is it going to be halfway through? Is it going to be, well, it can even be zero, right, at the edges where it's touching to the uh, pipe itself, right? So that's the question that I'm posing to you. So how am I going to calculate this V then, okay? We may need to refer to this. Or there is another uh, called, we call this the uh, inviscid flow assumption. And both of them exist in nature depending on the boundary conditions and the sizes and etc. But I can get like this. So this is kind of simple. Okay, this is inviscid, this is viscous, or sometimes we call this um, real flow. We, can't, we don't call the other one fake flow, okay? Um, but anyways, so this is simple. You get one V, you plug it in here or here, you're good to go. How about this? Well, then I have to look something like an average, right? So we average um, terminology. And that is defined as the uh, volumetric flow rate divided by the area. So if I have a volumetric flow rate, you can see that I get my uh, uh, here, right? It kind of makes sense, look here. So I'm saying that this is gonna be actually the average. Just use the average. That's all I'm saying over here. So, you know, just use the average over here. So, okay, then how am I gonna calculate it? So this will be the integral of V profile as a function of, let's say, the coordinates. Let's say this is the uh, Z direction, this is the R direction, and theta is the, uh, you know, so the velocity here will be a function of the r, obviously, right? It can be a function of theta, but let's stop that, no need, uh, times the dA, okay? And this dA will be 2 pi r dr, okay? Okay, so I, I also have a shortcut for you, so you don't have to go through this uh, kind of like not fun uh, exercise every single time. Obviously, I just wrote for a pipe here, right? You can write this for Cartesian coordinates too. This is cylindrical polar coordinates, okay? But if this is parallel plates, then in this particular case, what you can have is, you can have this V average will be two thirds of the V max, okay? So I get myself two thirds of the V max as my uh, average velocity. If I have circular pipes, then I will get myself V average to be well, half of it, V max by two, okay? You may need to refer to these two, 
that's most uh, common in thermodynamics. You probably don't need to go there depending on extreme cases, okay? Okay, so I think that's all I have for this segment. Thank you for watching so far.